Officer and Classmates, I am Lerma Jane with the Fleur Gornal from BSE 2C and I will be going to report about the types and causes of health impairments, physical disabilities, and neurological conditions. And I will also tackle about the classification of physical disabilities. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy learning. Thank you. Types and causes of health impairments, physical disabilities, and neurological conditions. According to Hayward, the common types of health impairments, physical disabilities, and neurological conditions are epilepsy, asthma, cerebral palsy, spina bifida, muscular dystrophy, and spinal cord injury. So what is epilepsy? Epilepsy is also known as seizure disorder. It occurs when abnormal electrical discharge in the brain causes a disturbance of movement, sensation, behavior, or consciousness. It occurs in any stages of life but common to develop during childhood. So what are the causes of epilepsy? Number one, cerebral palsy, infection of the brain or the central nervous system, metabolic disorder, high fever, interruption in blood supply to the brain, and lastly, the shaken baby syndrome. So what are the conditions that trigger seizures? These are fatigue, excitement, anger, hyperventilation, hormonal changes, withdrawal from alcohol or drugs, and lastly, exposure to certain pattern of light, sounds, or touch. There are different kinds of seizure, and the number one is the generalized tonic-clonic seizure or also known as grand mal seizure. It is the most common wherein muscles become stiff and one loses consciousness and falls to the floor. It involves violent shaking of the body while muscles contract and relax alternately. The second kind of seizure is the absent seizure or also known as petit mal. It is less severe but occurs more frequently. It involves brief loss of consciousness but lasts from a few seconds to half a minute. Then a person may stare blankly, flutter or blink, grow pale, and drop whatever he or she is holding, as if they dreaming or not listening. The person who have this can be unaware of the seizure. The third kind of seizure is what we call the complex partial seizure, or also known as psychomotor seizure. It is a brief period of inappropriate or purposeless activity. The examples of this are smacking one's lips, walking aimlessly, and shouting. The last kind is what we call the simple partial seizure. It involves a sudden jerking motion while consciousness is retained. One may experience an aura or a warming sensation before the seizure occurs. Now let's move to asthma. Asthma is a chronic lung disease. During asthma attack, the airways in the lungs narrow and the resistance in the airflow in and out of the lungs increases. This lung disease can cause by allergens such as pollen or certain foods, irritants such as cigarette smoke, exercise, and emotional stress. The symptoms of having asthma are wheezing, coughing, and difficulty breathing. Now let's move to cerebral palsy. It is a disorder of movement and posture. It is a permanent condition that results from having a tension in the brain or abnormality in brain growth. An individual who has cerebral palsy may lose control one's arms, leg, or speech. What is the cause of having cerebral palsy? The cause is the disease that affects the developing brain. What are the symptoms of cerebral palsy? The person may consider to have this disorder when he or she is suffering from disturbance in voluntary motor function such as paralysis, extreme weakness, lack of coordination, involuntary 
convulsions, and other motor disorder. There are different types of cerebral palsy. The first one is what we call the monoplegia. It affects one limb. The second one is the hemiplegia. It affects one side of the body including arm, leg, and trunk. The third one is the diplegia. It affects symmetrical of the body, the legs, or arms. The fourth is quadriplegia. It affects all four limbs. And lastly is the double hemiplegia. It primarily involves the arms with less severe involvement of legs. These are the images of how cerebral palsy affects the human body. Now let's move to spina bifida. Spina bifida is the most common neural tube defect which refers to congenital malformation of the brain's spinal cord or vertebrae. The vertebrae do not enclose the spinal cord. Thus, a portion of the spinal cord and nerves controlling muscles and feeling in the lower part of the body fails to develop normally. The fifth disease is what we call the muscular dystrophy. It is a group of inherited disease marked by progressive atrophy or wasting away of the body's muscle. The most common and severe type is the Gaussian muscular dystrophy, which affects only boys. Although about one-third of the cases are due to genetic mutation in families that have no history of the disease. This image shows the different types of dystrophy. The first type is the Dorsian and Decker type. Second, Emery Dreyfus type. Third, Lind Girdle type. The fourth one is the fascius scapulohomeral type and, and the last one is the oculoparyngeal type. What are the symptoms of muscular dystrophy? The symptoms are the following. The first one is the muscular weakness, difficulty in running and climbing stairs, walking in unusual gait, protruding stomach and hollow back, having calf muscles that appear unusually large because of fatty tissues replacing the degenerated area. The last one is the spinal cord injury. It is usually caused by lesions due to a penetrating injury, stretching of the vertebral column, fracture of the vertebrae, and compression of the spinal cord. That would be all for the types and causes of health impairments, physical disabilities, and neurological conditions. Now, let's move on to the classification of physical disabilities. The first one is the progressive condition that gets worse over time but can fluctuate. Examples are multiple sclerosis, neurological deterioration, muscular dystrophy, muscular disorder, chronic arthritis, or the inflammation of the joints. The second is the non-progressive condition that remains stable. The examples are, the first one, cerebral palsy. It is the neurological condition, spina bifida, congenital malformation of the spinal cord, spinal cord injury, neurological damage resulting from trauma. The third and last example is the non-progressive but can fluctuate. The examples are fibromyalgia, a chronic pain condition, and the second example is the chronic fatigue syndrome. It is the chronic fatigue condition. That would be all for my discussion. Thank you for listening.